Race fuel only cap. I have made a lot of these. This was made right in my foundry from scrap. And you can see that it is a lousy casting. I probably could have done a better job, but I didn't. And today I'm going to machine it all up, clean it all up, and show you the process. I'm going to square it up in the vise here so I can kind of dig out some of the areas uh, that have all of the extra aluminum stuck to it. Bridge port. Got a three flute aluminum, made for aluminum uh, end mill in there. I'm just going to kind of pick away at it. I don't want to go down too far because there's a radius in the bottom. I'm going to blend that in with a burr. Just going to clean that up. My pet. Had I done a better casting, uh, those wouldn't be there, but they're there. Anyway, I'm just showing the process. Now I got to dig out the center there. That I figured it would break away because they're asking sand to do a lot when it's such a small area that has to to uh, stay in there a little coolant keep things looped up just back and forth clean it out I don't have my air on I wish I did but I don't so I just can't blow the chips away okay now I'm just gonna do a quick pass on the bottom you can see it's a little wobbly but it won't be for long this stuff uh, doesn't machine well. It's not very hard with the, all the scraps, so it gets a little gooey. Now I'm going to blow that two inch hole in there for a piece of tubing that I'll press in there so you can hook a hose to it. Just back and forth, just going to pick away at it. It's probably around a, I don't know, half an inch thick. And that's um, probably eighth of an inch small on that hole size. I have done them before where I get too rambunctious and make them too big. So I'm just staying a little bit on the smaller side because if it goes over the two inch, then I'd have to make a special adapter. I don't want to do that. It's going to break through here in a second. There she goes. Okay. Quick caliper check. See where I'm at. Yeah, looks like 1846. About an eighth of an inch to go. And I know that each one of my little turns there is about 30 grand. So where are we at now? Yeah. 1940 something. Getting close. Getting real close. And then I'm going to just do a, a small little step in the bottom when I get really close. Yeah, right there. And then it's got a couple thousandths interference. You can see the step right there. Okay, that part's done. Flip it over. I'm going to grab it from the inside of the hole now so I can true up the OD of the cap. It's around four, four and a quarter, four and three eighths, somewhere there. Oh, I was wrong. I'm going to clean up the face first. And then i got to cut that O-ring slot in there. That is a uh, little bit bigger than an eighth inch. It's a .140 gas and oil proof O-ring that I buy from McMaster car near here, here we go now I'm gonna kind of clean up this OD and I'm not measuring anything I'm just gonna clean it until it's true and just till you see it nice and shiny there that's good enough okay now I gotta pick that little o-ring groove out that's just a small little cutter I ground up Luckily, it cast pretty good. I was surprised to see that most of that O-ring uh, was there. Because that, there again, that's a tough thing to cast. So I'm just going to go in and clean it up. Because it's, I have the witness of what was there, so I know it's close. And that should fit, and that fits pretty darn good. That's done. Okay, on to the lid. I'm going to put it in with the OD of the cap to true up the center knob part and then I'll flip it around and the reason why I do that is I don't want to assume that that pin is in the center because I want to keep that ridge around the font the same diameter same thickness rib
I'm not using any power feed. I don't trust myself, so it's just all by hand. And I'm just going to keep whittling that OD of that lid down until it fits inside the cap. Just quick pass. Another one there. Like 20, 40. That's probably about 60. There it is. That's good enough. It's actually a little too tight. I might probably do one more pass. Yep, I'm going to do one more pass on it. Quick little face off the bottom. And you can see the lousy finish. That's just because it's just so dang soft. I'll end up sanding that to make it nice. All right, I got a tiny little quarter inch carbide burr. I'm just gonna blend in the radius. That's where that big, we call them stickers in the foundry uh, terminology. I don't know if that's a real technical trade word, but that's what I was told they were called. So sticker, that's where the sand breaks away and then a chunk of aluminum that you have to remove is stuck on there. Thus, the sticker. Little barrel sander. These are actually for uh, fingernail. You, uh, salons that do nails you can buy like they're called uh, sanding rolls and different grits and you get the little mandrel and they sell them in very large quantities for not a whole lot of money they don't hold up super good on the doing aluminum but for the most part they work good okay well now we're going to drive this slot in this is obviously going way faster it's eight times normal speed but i just didn't want to bore you with it going slow so this is for the uh, lid arm that I'm going to be making custom tomorrow. I'll be cutting those all out by hand as well. There we go. That's the 3 16 width I need. That's done. Just going to kind of sand it up a little bit. Even though I'm probably getting ahead of myself a little bit because I'm going to go to my sandblaster. It's got steel shot in it and I'm going to end up doing the background around the font. Uh, to kind of give it a nice nicer finish so this is a little out of sequence here it's definitely out of sequence and that so this is a mixture of regular shot and split shot and it gives the appearance like uh, like you would get with a brand new Edelbrock intake manifold and you can see that I warped it right there I'm gonna have to straighten that out the heat from the um, right there look at that yep the heat from the shot kind of warped it I wasn't paying attention I did actually get that straightened out and I didn't use a hammer I put it in the vise and pressed it because if you start beating on this stuff it will just break okay I'm gonna come back in and clean that that texture off the o-ring surface because it looks nice machined and I'm going to leave it with the texture down in the little trough there little red scotch bright Good day in the shop today. You saw from a very rough casting from my previous video that was made from scrap. I think there was a ball bat, baseball bat in there, and I think there was a, a some kind of frying pan. I melted it all down to come up with the castings for my racer cap. And then I did the race fuel only cap. So today, this video was I just walked through the process of the machining of this cap tomorrow or the next day I'm going to design the arms and I'm going to hand cut them all out. So this is pretty much how I started. There's some automation involved now with some water jetting and such, but I'm back to my roots on this one and it's going to be done as much by hand as I can.